we have a 80 foot tall ash tree 18 inches in diameter at the base it's 44 feet from the house and um, it's leaning toward the house and there what you see is the split trunk and uh, next to it is this tree that you can see bending around from below comes around and then actually gets a little entangled with the tree I'm working on at the top. And this has been quite an advantage for me in that I could uh, I could hook into the other tree and sort of go up there without relying on the uh, strength of the dead tree. Uh, but now I'm at a point where you can see the dead tree and the live tree are kind of wrapped around each other up there at the top and that's complicating things and there you see the tree that's overhanging and I have my climbing line hooked into the uh, sort of overhanging but more like entangled tree at the top so here's the line coming down here. Now the plan is to ascend the climbing line with spurs, but not using them. And then up there at the top, at what's called the false crotch or the tie-in to the overhanging tree, I'm going to then uh, put another climbing line over on the dead tree about uh, six or eight feet higher and uh, transfer over to the dead tree, climb it with the spurs and cut the what I call a tip top piece off. There's the trunk that I've already severed and then here's the trunk that we're working on now. Well, here we are at the 60-foot level. First time I came up here, I came up with spurs and then installed the false crotch on this limb right below me. Yesterday I moved it up to there to be a little more useful for what I have to do now. There's a there's one of the limbs I cut off yesterday or maybe the day before. And then yesterday I cut this one off, that one, and then that one. And now it gets a little hairy. This live tree that I'm sitting on, and here's a branch of it, going like this over here and then it runs about eight feet well it runs in contact for about three or four feet and then with the dead tree and then they, they kind of like separate a little bit and then they come back together and there's some forks that are kind of hooked together and the uh, problem with all that is that it becomes difficult to tell where the limbs are going to fall because as they come down they get snagged on the, uh, the live tree. So that's the reason I don't want to just reach over here and uh, cut the dead tree right here which I can conveniently reach but the problem is the way it can snag up there it's pretty heavy pretty heavy couple hundred pounds and uh, I won't know exactly how it's going to fall so for that reason my plan is to climb that dead tree trunk with spurs and try to get to a point where I can saw right about where I cut that limb off yesterday alright so I 
uh, I took off the top piece about 15 feet and then the next 10 feet came off in a, three pieces. So now the two forks of the tree are about the same height, which is about, um, I'd say, 57 feet high. And uh, the plan is tomorrow to come back up with a chainsaw and take another uh, 17 feet or so off to get the, get the height down to, to uh, 40 feet. Well, today's the day that I take down my slingshot tree sculpture. So here we are. Here's the tree. And um, actually, uh, you who are familiar with the art world probably are aware of my tree sculpture entitled The Slingshot. I've disassembled the slingshot and is ready now, right here, for convenient transportation to uh, uh, exhibiting place. And um, now I have uh, my second tree sculpture is this one. I call this telephone pole. And uh, I'll probably take that down next summer. <laughs>